Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the National Training and Simulation Association's annual IFEST conference and trade show in Northern Virginia. And we have with us Chem Kumsal, who is uh, with NATO's Allied Command Transformation. You're the Deputy Director of the Technology uh, Section. Yes, Education and Individual Training Technology Section. Uh, which, which was uh, a little bit of a mouthful for me. Uh, you're a retired uh, Turkish uh, naval officer. You yes. retired as a captain in 2009, but you also have the unique distinction of working in NATO's training centers, both in Poland exactly. as well as in uh, Norway. So it's a real honor talking to you because you've done this throughout your whole career. And so I wanted to get a sense uh, from you on how ACT, Allied Command Transformation, is the command, NATO command that's based in the United States. General uh, uh, Denis Mercier is the, is the chief of that. But tell us how you guys fit into the whole training architecture and, and what your role is in this wider, uh, because one of the key things that, that the command does is ensure uniform training standards, does all the exercises and training curricula. Talk to us a little bit about where you guys fit into that giant ecosystem. Yes, um, when it comes to NATO, education and training is a huge responsibility. When you think about it at the first pace, you can say, hey, it's nation's responsibility to train officers and send them to NATO. In basics, maybe, but there's a difference. Uh, even if small, there's a difference being a logistics officer of a nation and being a NATO logistics officer because the procedures and the way you do business may be different than your nation in NATO. So you have to learn that. You have to be uh, informed about the ways and processes that we use in NATO. So it puts on us a lot of burden about making them a NATO officer and serve the alliance altogether. In this ecosystem, um, what we do as, as ACT is we support the way we train alliance officers to become NATO officers and go to operations and work together as 29 nations. Uh, work together efficiently and work together um, in the same way possible. So when it comes to my section, we definitely work on the technology because when you think about it, NATO is cons consists of 29 nations, so my audience, my students are all distributed. They have different levels of education, they have different ways of learning, and then we have to bring them all together and create a nice working machine. One of the ways to do that in the top level, we have a NATO training group going for the last maybe 40 years. All nations come together every year more than once, and then they talk about what they need to do together to make it happen. Uh, in, in the national level, highest level. But when, I, when it comes to our level in ACT, what we, we, what we do is we try to utilize everything we can from the nations technologically, what they have, and also from commercial world. We need to use technology to be efficient because of the reason I told you before. We have a distributed environment. We need to be able to bring them all together and be fast and effective because as everybody asks, NATO has budget issues also. Um, in this sense, we try to utilize the latest and best possible in, in, in ACT. What are some of the technologies? You know, you've been in this game for a very long time, so you've seen a whole bunch of how technology has, has changed training. From your perspective, what are some of the most interesting technologies to solve your particular training challenges and problems? Uh, ADL is the basic one. We are using it for the last 10 years, but nowadays, the most interesting one and making me uh, really uh, happy to see is immersive environments, immersive training. That you use these um, uh, virtual environments you use for people to train. For example, operations. To go into an operation is very expensive. So to be able to create that environment, instead of having a screen, if you can immerse that person into that environment and train him inside, you save a lot of money and you really rise the effectiveness of the training at the end. A lot of nations are already using it, firstly US, but we want to leverage it and give it to the use of the other nations who don't have it yet in that level. How do you change you know, 
the mentality of trainers? Because as the technology changes, what do you think are the keys from your standpoint in how nations have to change how they think about training as they adopt the new technology, as opposed to just using the technology in the existing environment, which oftentimes is, is a waste, really? Exactly. That's one of the biggest concerns and issues, to be honest, um, because there's a classical way every nation has used until today to train their personnel, their officers. Um, and even, even NATO's own education and training facilities, they have a business model already working in their eyes. When it comes to using technology, you have to con uh, make them believe that it's going to work and it's not going to disrupt anything because it's an ongoing business and it's an important business when it comes to serving NATO. So they don't want to uh, disturb anything. So it's not easy to, to tell them, yeah, very interesting, let's get on board and do this. It's not easy. Mainly, half of my job is just do, doing that. I'm traveling uh, everywhere in NATO trying to uh, understand them what is valuable when it comes to technology, how we can use it with them, and how we, how we can make it happening for them uh, when it comes to new technologies. One of the key roles of the command is how to also exchange ideas, get best practices from one country and apply it to the other, whether it's in cyber, but whether it's in classical sort of training. Tell us what are the ways, what are the, what are good practices that you see across the alliance, uh, whether they're good, you know, Turkish practices or British or American or, uh, you know, German or, or elsewhere in the alliance that can be applied to one another to help solve what is actually all universal problems. Every single one of the countries faces the exact same set of <laughs> training problems, which is amazing why everybody hasn't adopted sort of more unified kind of training approaches to some of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, to solve this, we have a new program called Global Programming as NATO uh, Educational World. That is, we have buckets of functions like cyber. Cyber is a, is a we call them disciplines. Cyber is a discipline. Uh, strategic uh, foresight and uh, strategic communication is a discipline. They are all functions in their sense. And we create education and training around this function. We give two, uh, we have two heads for every discipline. One is a requirement authority, one is department head. Requirement authority is the guy who collects all the requirements inside NATO for that discipline, for cyber, for example. And that is mostly from operational side of NATO because we are serving operations. So operational people should tell us what they require in that function. So this guy creates the requirements. And we have department head from within the solution side, from the education and training side of business, which takes this requirement and looks around and tries to find the solution for that requirement. Then it finds the best practice inside NATO who has the solution. And it serves and says the requirements, well, here is your solution. You can use this to fill your gap. And at the end of every year, we bring everyone together in one room and, and, and talk about where we are, do we need anything, what we have done this year, what we need to do to next year. So close the loop. That's basically how we try to utilize everything we have inside NATO. Uh, have you seen in your career um, a bridging of the gaps among, services, among nations? Do you see the training approaches are starting to get more similar or more dissimilar over time? Um, in fact, it, it gets similar. Uh, I have, uh, I'm organizing a NATO e-learning forum every year down in Virginia Beach. We have attendance from all over NATO, even from partner nations. And in, in, during these conference, uh, conferences I've seen, people are getting to knowledge of better use and they're implementing it. Um, in this sense, for example, we have some nations which NATO helped them to create their own e-learning uh, capability, like Romania, like Armenia as a partner uh, country. And we are happy to see they are now getting better and better and being the leaders of this technology. And just for our um, audience so that they can put it on their calendar, when is the event and where is, it, where is it so that they can register? Yeah, it's at the end of August, 29 to 31st of August at Western Hotel, Virginia Beach Town Center. Well, you know what? We'll try to come down there and see you uh, for it. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to see you there. Please. Thanks very, very much. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much.